usual filmmakers in Hollywood, he's beaten the system at its own game, which is trash. Trash by John Waters has class. He made such famously unknown schlock classics as Hag in a Black Leather Jacket, <laughs> Eat Your Makeup, and Mondo Trasho. <laughs> With his 1988 film Hairspray, he emerged from cult status to convince even the most skeptical critic that he'd found the secret of tackiness as an art form. Patty Hearst will be in his next movie, which indicates that people are ready to rob banks to work with him. <laughs> so I'm very glad to have him on our program. Ladies and gentlemen, John Waters. John, what have we learned tonight? Celebrity commercials, they're, they're big business now, aren't they're, they? They're very big, with the best kind of celebrities, the most mediocre ones of all. <laughs> and they're my favorite lately, like, like game show host and deviates you remember from children's shows. <laughs> and, and the ones that you haven't thought of since you were a child, and you finally see them, you thought, oh my God, it's like scary celebrities, the best kind there is. <laughs> it's, it's a new trend, you can go even a little further. I think in America, since we worship fame of any kind, no matter what it's for, that basically Charles Manson could endorse yeah. products, I think. I suppose it could happen. After all, Ronald Biggs did actually run the, he organized the Great Train Run. Yeah. People got hurt in the Great Train and Run. And plus it was a commercial that everybody talked about. If they let Manson out, he could go to the trendiest club and they'd put him in the head of the VIP line, say, right this way, right this way, give him free drink tickets, anything. It's, but today in America, the difference is you have to have a new twist on it to be famous, and that's some kind of medical news. Uh, baby Faye started this trend. I don't know if you remember her. She was part baby, part monkey. She was good. She was good. And I liked her. She was but, really, well, she, really Unfortunately, she's no longer with us. But, uh, <laughs> but, see, I would have hired her, but the one I really wanted for my new movie was Mother Teresa. <laughs> I mean, she has a press agent, you know. Really? She, she really does. I guess there's not a lot of celebrities in Bangladesh and, you know, her, her place is where she works. But I would have had her play a hooker, a terrorist, something different. You know? <laughs> Give her a chance to, to sort of Wide increase her image. Range. Yeah. yeah. To stretch. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You, uh, would, would you lend your illustrious name to a product? Oh, yes. I, I've always wanted to endorse some sort of meat product. And, but not the kind of meat after the butchers have taken every piece of the animal, what's left. And I'd like to say, you know, hi, I'm John Waters, and eat my new product, mystery meat. Where you didn't know what it was, but boy, the vitamins were great in it. I, I wanted to do cigarettes, too, you know, because I, I used to be more than a heavy smoker. I was a cigarette. And uh, I smoked four packs a day. I stopped sex for cigarettes. Uh, nothing was too good. I, I used to get in fights in airports. I'd be there having my morning coffee, smoking a cigarette, and some man would go, <coughs> I thought, oh, God, here he goes. He'd say to the waiter, excuse me, sir, is he allowed to smoke in here? And the waiter would say, yes, he is. And I'd go, <laughs> You know, I b believe in live and let live. Did I mention his girlfriend was wearing white and it wasn't summer? <laughs> Ultimate capital fashion offense. <laughs> I, I'm a liberal of sorts. You see that commercial where, uh, where Marilyn Monroe asked them to put gasoline in the little tummy of her yes. car? You know? was yeah. she, was she, did she spill glamour for you? I love Marilyn, but she's been dead so long. Let's leave her alone. It's sort of an exercise in necrophilia. I mean, not that I'm against necrophilia. It's one of the few things I haven't tried. But, uh, <laughs> And who knows, in my old age, I might try it. But, uh, but I like Jane Mansfield much better, actually. I mean, she, to me, was the first female female impersonator. And she, <laughs> at, at the height of her career, she so believed in being Jane Mansfield that she would walk up Hollywood Boulevard, the boulevard of broken dreams, and dressed in a bikini, walking an ocelot on a leash, and hand out autographed pictures of herself to startled families. <laughs> uh, I really respect her. You know, even when she died, like uh, she was decapitated in a car accident coming from a used car lot opening, yeah. which is, I think, really classy. <laughs> You know, Jane went crazy. She had, when she built her pink mansion, she even had in it a special room that was built for the press, which she stocked for liquor and was open 24 hours a day. So the press could just hang out there and three, three shifts a day, she'd run in in a bikini and squeal and give a few <laughs> quotes and run out. They love that Jane. She's a... Uh... You're in favor of that, aren't you? Of stars being sort of uh, in the press and everything and not hiding and all that sort of stuff. Of course. I don't understand these new Hollywood brats that get $2 million a movie and then give you an attitude when you ask to take their picture. Mm -hmm. That's the whole point. I mean, being in show business, you should work and work and work so you're so famous you can never leave your house. <laughs> 
mean, that's the point of being a celebrity, isn't it? So you don't really approve of the sort of things like uh, that Madonna and Sean Penn do, of running from the photographers and all that sort no, of stuff? No, you should run towards them. <laughs> Is Hollywood still the place where, where dreams come true? Sure, anything can happen. Sylvester Stallone's a star. <laughs> uh, I mean... You, there's things I love about it and things I hate about it. Uh, what I hate about it, it's, it's the, people dress really badly there. I mean, you see 60-year-old women in leather miniskirts. Uh, it's the fringe abuse capital of the world. Uh, you, you see people there with these facelifts. It doesn't make them look younger. It makes them look merely surprised, which I think is not a good look for the autumn of your years. I think, it, you know, confidence is maybe. Yeah. But you walk into parties and you think, what happened? And then you realize, oh, it's just everybody with a facelift. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not an earthquake, no, right? It's no, no. And, 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 and Liberace, who I really was everything I believed in, uh, had a facelift at the end that was so tight that he could never not smile. So he always looked like Mr. Sardonicus. I don't know if you ever saw that William Castle movie, but... Great movie. Yeah, it was good. <laughs> Did you enjoy Jackie Chan as, as a kung fu Oh, star? sure, that was great. I mean, think of all the sound men it keeps in business. <laughs> Jackie Chan's just too modern for me, because I was a Bruce Lee man. Yeah, you know? well, I used to collect the magazine. They say, they say that when he died, he actually exploded. Spontaneous combustion, something yeah. that I'm always worried about. It's a very, very Catholic thing. You're walking down the street and you feel so guilty you explode. <laughs> And all that's left is your pair of shoes and some ash. <laughs> and so, I mean, I, I thought, you know, Liz Taylor has this diet book out. I mean, I wonder if she needs money that bad. I mean, I love Liz because she and Divine look, you know, kind of alike. And she was, she was on the cover of People magazine. It said, I thought I would explode. And I, I thought of this spontaneous combustion. I mean, imagine if she did. You're, you're at a premiere and here, bang, you got hit in the face with day-old pepperoni. <laughs> People are running, Liz Taylor exploded. <laughs> I mean, it's the best photo opportunity there could ever be, basically. <laughs> Uh, in Baltimore. Yes. And uh, hairdo capital of the world. Yeah. Because uh, it's a sort of out of way. You like out of the way places. It's. A, well, I, I like to keep grounded. It keeps me my version of sane to live there. How do you think the Cowboy Channel is going to go down there? Very well, because uh, we have lots of Willie Nelson looks normal. I mean, fashion is strange there. I mean, <laughs> punk just hit. <laughs> Uh, it, it, I, I think it will very much work there because, mm -hmm. because in Baltimore, I mean, this sort of sums up my love for Baltimore. I, I was walking down an alley. It was an old, cold, ugly winter day. And there was a little redneck girl sitting in a torn party dress playing in a mud puddle. And she looked up at me and just said, hey, I just killed a worm. Oh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Next, her brother. I mean, it was just the beginning of her story. But it's, it's magical little, little moments like that that keep me living there. <laughs> Redneck, it's a word we haven't really got in Britain, or I don't think in the street. It's, it's I've really been to Liverpool. It looks similar. <laughs> well, you know, I think we've got them. We haven't got the word. You, you haven't know? got a word. Yeah, the you word, word is... You're kinder. You're know, sort of thick-necked and red-necked and... and uh, I like right red-necks. I mean, I, I, I'm not putting them down at all. They have the, the most severe style. All my movies are made about that style. But the question is, do they like you? I mean, you're, you're a pretty outlandish sort of character for them. Do they threaten you? Do you get fan mail? No, I get more, more fan, fan mail from prisoners because um, I taught in jail and rehabilitated them by showing them my most notorious movies, telling them that if I can make a living, anyone can. <laughs> and uh, so, I don't know, I, I like murderers. I actually make good friends because if you can forget their one bad night, they're very loyal. <laughs> very loyal. I, I need to be in jail once a month. Yeah. And it's sort of like a good English pub. It's quiet, no phone calls, <laughs> good conversation. It's a nice way to relax, actually. You're on, well on your way now to being an establishment figure. The Oscar well, is, isn't that the ultimate irony? Well, <laughs> the Oscar is can't be far away. And you, you really set out to subvert American society. And, it, and you're going to be canonized for it. What's the most devious thing that's open to you now? What can the you most do? devious thing I can do now is uh, have my film play in every shopping mall in America to spread my cancer to a wider group. <laughs> uh, Universal Pictures releasing my film Crybaby, which to me is the most ridiculous thing. They're opening it everywhere in the country. We have the billboard on Times Square now. And that to me is the best, to get it in mid-America. And I always think, oh, don't look down on mid-America. They're much hipper than you think everything. It's not true. Because I went recently, I gave a lecture in Missouri. And the student who booked me gave me a ride to the airport afterwards. And he was seriously telling me of the angst 
of living with his parents, and he said, and I can't eat my green vegetables. And I thought, <laughs> what a rebel. I got, you know, the wild one here. And, and he's saying, I can't, a quart of green beans. Like, he was ranting about it. I almost leapt from the car. I didn't know what to do. <laughs> What are, you trying, what are you trying to tell the Western world? Are you telling us to treasure our, uh, treasure the, the, our hamburger cartons and all this, this crappy stuff because that's really our... No, I'm, I'm saying that everything that... What you, if you can't change anything, all you can do is laugh. If something is so terrible that it's a release to laugh, I think that's healthy. I don't think that's sick humor. I, I think sick humor is, is, is um, telling people how to live their life. To me, that's sick. I love your, your book... Uh, which is published a couple of years ago, so it's yeah. not really a plug to mention yeah. it. What's it called? Crackpot. <laughs> I can hold it up, yeah. right. <laughs> Your book, Crackpot. And it's, uh, there's a very profound thing you said in it, which, is, which has been an influence on me. It's, uh, and your ambition, you say, is to have a happy childhood as an adult. Yeah, certainly, yeah. So how are you I mean, doing? How, well, how's because it going? I always wanted to be a juvenile delinquent when I was little. <laughs> but I was seven. It was tough to be one. I mean, what could I do? I mean... You know, so I made a movie about juvenile delinquency. I used to want to be on those dance shows, and I couldn't, so I made a movie about that. All the things that you can't do in real life when you were young, you can put into a movie, and then you get to control it. You get to make it even better than what you missed. John, I could talk to you forever, but time's gone, so I have to say thank you very much, John thank Waters. Thank you. <laughs>